Clarence Thomas is an American lawyer and jurist who serves as an Associate Justice of the Supreme Court of the United States. He was nominated by President George H. W. Bush to succeed Thurgood Marshall and has served since 1991. Born, June 23, 1948, age 75 years, Pinpoint, Montgomery, Georgia, United States. Spouse, Virginia Thomas, M. 1987, Kathy Ambush, M. 1971-1984. Nominations, NAACP Image Award for Outstanding Literary Work Biography slash Autobiography. Education, Yale Law School, 1974, more. Children, Jamal Adeen Thomas. Awards, Francis Boyer Award. Marriage Location, Omaha, Nebraska, United States. Clarence Thomas Net, worth $1 million. Early Life. Thomas was born on June 23, 1948, in his parents' wooden shack in Pinpoint, Georgia. Pinpoint was a small community near Savannah founded by freedmen in the 1880s. He was the second of three children of M.C. Thomas, a farm worker, and Leola Williams. Williams had been born out of wedlock, after her mother's death, she was sent from Liberty County, Georgia, to live with an aunt in Pinpoint. The family were descendants of enslaved people and spoke Gullah as a first language. Thomas's earliest known ancestors were slaves named Sandy and Peggy, who were born in the late 18th century and owned by wealthy planter Josiah Wilson of Liberty County. Thomas's older sister, Emma, was born in 1946, and his younger brother, Myers, in 1949. Upon becoming pregnant with Thomas's older sister, Leola was expelled from her Baptist church and dropped out of high school after the 10th grade, her father ordered her to marry M.C. in January 1947. After three years of marriage, M.C. sued for divorce, claiming that Leola neglected the children, and a judge granted the request in March 1951. After the divorce, M.C. moved to Savannah and later Pennsylvania, visiting his children only once. Leola went to work as a maid in Savannah during the week and returned to Pinpoint on the weekends. Custody of the children was awarded to Leola's aunt. When her aunt's house burned down in 1955, Leola took her children to live with her in the room she rented in a tenement with an outdoor toilet in Savannah, leaving her daughter with the aunt in Pinpoint. She asked her father, Myers Anderson, for help. He initially refused but agreed after his wife threatened to throw him out. Thomas and his brother went to live with Anderson, his maternal grandfather, in 1955 and experienced amenities such as indoor plumbing and regular meals for the first time. Despite having little formal education, Anderson had built a successful business delivering coal, oil, and ice. When racial unrest led to widespread protest and marches in Savannah from 1960 to 1963, Anderson used his wealth to bail out demonstrators and took his grandchildren to meetings promoted by the NAACP. Thomas has described his grandfather as the person who has influenced his life the most. Anderson converted to Catholicism and sent Thomas to be educated at a series of Catholic schools. Thomas attended the predominantly black St. Pius X High School in Chatham County for two years before transferring to St. John Vianney's Minor Seminary on the Isle of Hope, where he was the segregated boarding school's first black student. Though he experienced hazing, he performed well academically. He spent many hours at the Carnegie Library, the only library for blacks in Savannah before libraries were desegregated in 1961. When Thomas was 10 years old, Anderson began putting his grandsons to work during the summers, helping him build a house on a plot of farmland he owned, building fences, and doing farm work. He believed in hard work and self-reliance, never showed his grandsons affection, beat them frequently according to Leola, and impressed the importance of a good education on them. Anderson taught Thomas that all of our rights as human beings came from God, not man, and that racial segregation was a violation of divine law. Personal Life Family In 1971, Thomas married Kathy Grace Ambush. The couple had one child, Jamal Adeen, born in 1973, who was Thomas's sole child. Thomas and his first wife separated in 1981 and divorced in 1984. In 1987, Thomas married Virginia Lamp, a lobbyist and aide to U.S. Representative Dick Armey. In 1997, they took in Thomas's six-year-old great-nephew, Mark Martin Jr., who had lived with his mother in Savannah Public Housing. 
Since 1999, Thomas and his wife have traveled across the U.S. in a motor coach between court terms. Virginia Ginny Thomas has remained active in conservative politics, serving as a consultant to the Heritage Foundation and as founder and president of Liberty Central. In 2011, she stepped down from Liberty Central to open a conservative lobbying firm, touting her experience and connections, meeting with newly elected Republican representatives and calling herself an ambassador to the Tea Party. Also in 2011, 74 Democratic members of the House of Representatives wrote that Justice Thomas should recuse himself on cases regarding the Affordable Care Act because of appearance of a conflict of interest based on his wife's work. The Washington Post reported in February 2021 that Ginny Thomas apologized to a group of Thomas's former clerks on the email list served Thomas Clerk World for her role in contributing to a rift relating to pro-Trump postings and former Thomas Clerk John Eastman who spoke at the rally and represented Trump in some of his failed lawsuits filed to overturn the election results. In March 2022, texts between Ginny Thomas and Trump's chief of staff Mark Meadows from 2020 were turned over to the Select Committee on the January 6 attack. The texts showed Ginny Thomas repeatedly urging Meadows to overturn the election results and repeating conspiracy theories about ballot fraud. In response, 24 Democratic members of the House of Representatives and the Senate demanded that Thomas recuse himself from cases related to efforts to overturn the results of the 2020 presidential election and the January 6 attack at the U.S. Capitol on the grounds that Ginny Thomas's involvement in such efforts raised questions about his impartiality. An April 2022 Quinnipiac poll found that 52 percent of Americans agreed that, in light of Ginny Thomas's texts about overturning the results of the 2020 presidential election, Thomas should have recused himself from related cases. Early Legal Career With no job offers from major law firms, Thomas took a position as an associate with Missouri Attorney General John Danforth, who offered him the prospect of practicing what he liked. Thomas moved to St. Louis to study for the Missouri Bar and was admitted on September 13, 1974. He remained financially destitute even after leaving Yale, trying unsuccessfully on one occasion to make money by selling his blood at a blood bank, and hoped that by working for Danforth he might later acquire a job in private practice. From 1974 to 1977, Thomas was an assistant attorney general of Missouri, the only African-American member of Danforth's staff. He worked first in the office's Criminal Appeals Division and later in the Revenue and Taxation Division. Thomas conducted lawsuits independently, gaining a reputation as a fair but controversial prosecutor. Years later, after he joined the Supreme Court, Thomas recalled his position in Missouri as the best job I've ever had. When Danforth was elected to the U.S. Senate in 1976, Thomas left to become an attorney in Monsanto's legal department in St. Louis. He found the job unsatisfying, so left to rejoin Danforth in Washington, D.C., as a legislative assistant. From 1979 to 1981, he handled energy issues for the Senate Commerce Committee. Thomas, who had switched his party affiliation from Democratic to Republican while working for Danforth in Missouri, soon drew the attention of officials in the newly elected Reagan administration as a black conservative. Pendleton James, Reagan's personnel director, offered Thomas the position of Assistant Secretary for Civil Rights at the U.S. Department of Education. Initially reluctant, Thomas agreed after Danforth and others pressed him to take the post. In 